This is Mother Teresa. She works with the poor in India. Her message goes beyond India and beyond our usual understanding of poverty. She reminds us that we are all poor. And yet in poverty, Teresa and free. In the poor, she finds Christ. She thinks everyone can. Everyone, everywhere. A few months ago, we went out in Calcutta and we picked up four or five people from the street. And we took them to our home for the dying. One of them was in a very bad condition. So I told the sisters, I'll take care of her. And I did for her all that my love could do. And I put her in bed. She took hold of my hand. And there was such a wonderful smile in her face. She said one word, thank you, as she died. She gave me much more than I gave her. She gave me her grateful love. And for one second, I reflected on looking at her. And I said, what would I have done if I was she? And my answer was, I would have tried to draw some attention to myself. I would have said I'm hungry or I'm cold or I'm dying. But she, she was so great. She was so beautiful in her giving. The poor are great people. They give us much more than we give to them. We must love them, not by feeling pity for them. We must love them because it is Jesus in the distressing disguise of the poor. They are our brothers and sisters. They are our own people. Those lepers, those dying, those hungry, those naked, they are Jesus. That is why I say that our sisters and brothers, the missionaries of charity, are not social workers. They are contemplatives right in the heart of the world. They want to feel that freedom of poverty that comes of choice. We want to know, to understand the poor, we must know what is poverty. And that's why I call it freedom of poverty. We are free to love God, to love Jesus with undivided love, and to love our poor with undivided love. Every day, we say this prayer, Dear Jesus, help me to spread thy fragrance everywhere I go. Flood my soul with thy spirit and life. Penetrate and possess my whole being so utterly that all my life may only be a radiance of thine. Shine through me and be so in me 
that every soul I come in contact with may feel thy presence in my soul. Let them look up and see no longer me, but only Jesus. Stay with me, and then I shall begin to shine as you shine, so to shine as to be a light to others. Our sisters and brothers, to be able to do what they are doing, to live the life as they are living. We need our lives to be woven with the Eucharist. That's why we begin our day with Jesus and the Holy Eucharist. We receive Jesus himself in that bread, in the bread of life. And he gives us that beautiful opportunity to give him in return. To help us to go to heaven, Christ made it a condition that at the hour of death, you and I, when we come before him, we will be judged on what we have been to the poor. For he said, I was hungry and you gave me to eat. I was hungry not only for bread, but for that understanding love to be wanted, to be known, to be somebody to somebody. Naked, not only for a piece of cloth, but naked for that human dignity, for that respect. Homelessness, not only for a home made of bricks, but homelessness that comes from that terrible loneliness that are shut in, the unwanted, the unloved, go alone on their way. Are we there? Do we know them? Do we see them? I visited a home, one of the best homes in England. Our sisters are there working. I, d I don't know, but I have never seen so much beautiful things and so much wonderful things in a home like I saw in that home. And yet, there was not a single smile on the faces of those people. All these old people, they were all looking towards the door. And I asked the sister in charge, and I said, Sister, why, sister, why are they like that? Why are they not smiling? I'm so used to see smiles on people's faces, because I think smile generates smiles, just as love generates love. And then she said, this is every day like that. They're always waiting for somebody to come and visit them. The loneliness is eating them up. And for days after days, they keep on looking. Nobody turns up. That unwantedness is great poverty. know our poor? Do we really know the poor in our own house, in our own family? Maybe we are not hungry for a piece of bread. Maybe our children, our husband, our wife are not hungry, are not naked, are not homeless. But are you sure that there is no one there who feels unwanted, unloved? Where are your old father and mother? Where are they? And so, you and I, let us look straight into our own families. For love begins at home. Do we really understand the poverty of Christ? The poverty of our poor in our own home, in our own communities. Never turn your back to the poor. For in turning your back to the poor, you are turning it to Jesus Christ.